I, I don't know, like, members of the press, what the f Beto O'Rourke swore at reporters following a dumb question. Now, this uh, happened in a response to the uh, mass shooting that took place in his former district of El Paso, where he was a congressman. And look, this question isn't... It wouldn't be dumb if it wasn't about President Trump. But at some point, the press has to learn something and retain the information when going forward and asking future questions. Watch. Is there anything in your mind that the president can do now to make this any better? Uh, what do you think? Um, you know that he's been saying? He's, he's been calling Mexican immigrants rapists and criminals. Um, I, I don't know, like, members of the press, what the okay. Hold on a second. You know, uh, I, I, it's, it's, these, um, it's these questions that you know the answers to. I mean, connect the dots about what he's been doing in this country. Um, he's not tolerating racism. He is promoting racism. He's not tolerating violence. He's inciting racism and violence in this country. So, um, you know, I, I just, I, I don't know what kind of question that is. He's making you guys, you guys, you guys, you guys he's making the All right. Now, Beto's reaction here, uh, again, if it's authentic, I think it is authentic. I have an issue telling when Beto's being authentic and when he isn't. He's been good on these issues. So when he was running against Ted Cruz for uh, the Senate, I mean, there's that great video of him discussing uh, the importance of Colin Kaepernick uh, kneeling and what that means. Uh, I think on these sorts of issues, Beto is, uh, is solid, and I think his anger here is real. Look, these questions would make sense if, if the president was anybody else. But at what point does the press just learn and absorb the fact that Donald Trump is racist? that he emboldens white supremacy, that, that he encourages this sort of behavior. So, it, like, it's it, it's hard to really understand why the press is even acting this way. I mean, this is something that should be obvious, that they themselves, many of them, have been reporting on up till now. Uh, like, it, it's, it's... These kinds of questions don't make a lot of sense, because... This is not a president that will do anything to react to any of this. And just to go a little more into the actual policy of what Trump could be doing but hasn't, this from The Atlantic. The Anti-Defamation League recently reported that right-wing extremists were linked to more murders in the U.S., at least 50 in 2018, than in any other year since 1995, when Timothy McVeigh bombed an Oklahoma City federal building. The organization also found that in the past decade, roughly 73% of extremist-related fatalities have been associated with domestic right-wing extremists, relative to about 23% attributed to Islamist extremists. President Donald Trump, who has stoked fear of immigrants, inflamed racial divisions, and excused the activities of white nationalists, has cut funding for, and in some cases wholly eliminated, initiatives begun under Barack Obama to counter violent extremism, known as CVE including of the white supremacist variety. But the Obama administration's efforts also tend to be exaggerated. Today, the U.S. government's CVE programs, quote, largely continue as they have for the past decade, underfunded, understaffed, and focused on individuals influenced by the Islamic State and other jihadi groups more than right-wing extremists, the extremism experts Seamus Hughes and Haroro Ingram wrote in March. So, even under Barack Obama... This wasn't perfect. The The funding, the the uh, focus on right-wing extremism just wasn't where it should have been. And I think a lot of that is because of the media. The media's almost complete focus and fixation on Islamic extremism or extremism from, from outside the country as opposed to the extremism that is born and bred within the United States. But that said, Trump was obviously much worse. So here's just one of the examples. In the waning days of Barack Obama's administration, the Department of Homeland Security awarded a set of grants to organizations working to counter violent extremism, including among white supremacists. One of the grantees was Life After Hate, which The Hill has called, quote, one of the only programs in the U.S. devoted to helping people leave neo-Nazi and other white supremacist groups. Another grant went to researchers at the University of North Carolina who were helping young people develop media campaigns aimed at preventing their peers from embracing white supremacy and other violent ideologies. But soon after Trump took office, his administration canceled both of these grants. In its first budget, it requested no funding for any grants in this field. 
and this decline can't be chalked up to the general budget cuts. Although Trump has slashed funding for many domestic departments, he increased Department of Homeland Security spending by more than 7% in his first budget and another 4% in his second. So there has been a focus by the Trump administration to not put an effort into right-wing extremism, to, to not put any, any extra money, any grants, any extra effort into combating right-wing terrorism. So this speaks for itself, and this is the kind of information that the press should already be armed with when they're going into these sorts of uh, scrums with these politicians. They should already be aware of these things, but instead they act like Trump is a blank slate. Oh, what can Trump do to fix this? Don't be dumb. You should know this by now. You should all know this, that Trump is a white supremacist president. This is obvious. Now, I also want to show um, Beto's follow-up here when he was on uh, Morning Joe discussing this. Um, I, I mean, the president has not been shy. He's not been saying this behind closed doors. This is out in the open. You know, all people of, of one religion inherently defective and should be banned from the shores of this country. The only modern Western democracy that I can think of that said anything close to this is the Third Reich, uh, Nazi Germany. Um, talking about human beings as though they are animals, making them subhuman to make it okay to put their kids in cages. We, we've lost seven children in our custody just over the last year in this, the wealthiest, the most powerful country on the face of the planet, saying that he wants more immigrants like those from Nordic countries, the whitest places on the face uh, of the planet. Um, this president, his his open is also an invitation to violence. We've seen a rise in hate crimes every single one of the last three years. So, Joe, you're, you're absolutely right. The writing has been on the wall since his maiden speech coming down that escalator describing That's Mexican right. immigrants as rapists and criminals. Uh, th the actions that follow cannot surprise us. And, and anyone who is surprised um, is, is part of this problem right now, including members of the media who ask, hey, Beto, do you think the president is racist? Well, Jesus Christ, of course he's racist. He's been racist from day one before day one when he was questioning whether Barack Correct. Obama was born in the United States. He's trafficked in this stuff from, from the very beginning. And, and we are reaping right now what he has sown and what his supporters in Congress have sown. We have to put a stop to it. So Beto is exactly right here. Now, I want to be clear. I'm not supporting Beto for president. I don't even think he should be in the race. I think he should be running for Senate in, in Texas again. I don't know why he's in this race. But with that said, everything he is saying here is completely on point. He is exactly right. Now, uh, this, uh, so I saw this tweet from PolitiFact, and I mean, it, it shows you how, how serious uh, of an event this, this shooting was. So this from uh, Beto O'Rourke says of El Paso, that some years in a city of almost 700,000, we had five murders the entire year. Our average over the last 10 years is 18 murders per year. We exceeded that average just on one day. And Plutifax uh, says that's true. So, yeah, I don't even... It, I hate talking about these stories. I do. Because, to me, the, the answers are obvious. Everything's in front of us. It's white supremacy. It's gun laws. That's it. So look, and people talk about mental health issues. Everybody has mental health issues. Everybody has, has a mental health issue. I mean, <laughs> I have mental health issues. Every, everybody has a mental health issue somewhat. Every, other, every murderer definitely has mental health issues. But that isn't really the, the focus here because we all have mental health, obviously to varying degrees. But the real issue here is the white supremacy and the guns. Both of these things can be addressed by the president and his administration and Republicans, but they are not willing to do anything about it. And that's why nothing is getting better.